Thank you, Brian and, and, and Heather, uh, uh, for hosting this uh, very special occasion. And I'm particularly honored uh, to be asked to moderate this session uh, with this uh, esteemed panel that I greatly admire. Uh, I also um, want to thank all of you for being here uh, and joining us today. Um, because we're going to go back uh, to the 80s, 1980s, a period of substantial growth of the biotech industry in San Diego with our panel. And it's most appropriate that we're holding this meeting in Atkinson Hall, named in honor of uh, President Emeritus Dick Atkinson, uh, former uh, president of the university and chancellor at UCSD, and he happens to be with us today. So for those of you who do not know uh, Dick Atkinson, Dick, could you raise your hand? He's sitting right here in the front row. When Dick Atkinson was appointed chancellor at UCSC in 1980, two years after I arrived here, actually I had met Dick, he'll remember, met Dick at Stanford at a coffee shop with a mutual friend, one of his postdocs. Little did I know that we would meet up again in San Diego. Um, so um, uh, when he came here, he brought with him uh, from Stanford, the entrepreneurial experience and vision that he saw played out at Stanford and with the birth of Silicon Valley. And at UCSC, he immediately sought to use the Stanford Terman model, Terman being the prior, uh, earlier dean of the engineering school that helped create Silicon Valley. And uh, he brought these ideas to San Diego, and uh, his idea was that UCSC would be a technology generator for the San Diego economy. He began to promote uh, he began to promote the growth of high-tech startups and the raising of startup funds from the private sector. It was during his administration that uh, he supported and gave birth to the Connect organization, uh, which, and Connect, which assists entrepreneurs uh, at every step of the way in starting new companies. And, uh, and virtually every region of, the, of this country now is trying to emulate Connect. And now I see we're very, <laughs> I realize that we also have the Connect founders here. We have Mary Walshock. <laughs> Sitting next to Dick Atkinson, raise your hand, Mary. And we have David Hale over here. And uh, this is their, uh, they've been a tremendous organization in fostering the growth of the biotech life science industry in San Diego. So I feel like we're all here, like one happy family, so to speak. Uh, anyway, moving right along, the 80s and 90s were decades of substantial growth of the, of, of the life science industry here. And, and biotechnology was actively supported by the venture capital industry, the venture capital community. And as a result of all of this, uh, San Diego has emerged as one of the top three biotech clusters in the world today. And as you heard from uh, Heather and from Brian, uh, but uh, be, uh, the organization, these organizations have been formed, uh, well, the Life Science Foundation has been formed to record and preserve accurately uh, the history of the biotechnology industry. And as part of this endeavor, both uh, LSF and UCSD have brought together three of the mo most the legendary venture capitalists who were active at the beginning uh, of, this, uh, of this era in the 80s in San Diego, nearly 30 years ago. And they, and they have created some of the most successful companies in the United States today. Not only that, their venture capital partnerships have been the most, some of the most successful venture capital partnerships in the history of life science investing. All three of these individuals remain active today and continue to fund and develop life science companies and are in the unique position to, to comment on how things were done back then and how the world has changed over the past nearly 30 years. I think it's important to talk about the past so that we have a perspective on what attributes and conditions are vital to the success of venture capital-backed life science companies and venture capital investing in general as we go, as we move it, uh, it into the future. So for the next 15 minutes, we're going to uh, go back nearly 30 years ago and talk about what it was back then uh, that these gentlemen did. Um, these gentlemen have, as I said, a unique perspective on the past. They, they, and, uh, and they will talk about how, how they funded and created and developed some of, the, of these uh, companies uh, that uh, have become very successful, and I hope they'll comment on how the climate back then and their own contributions led to the success. After that, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the present climate for funding life science uh, companies and also what's in store for the future. Our panelists, as you heard, are Jim Blair, 
founding partner of Domain Associates, Kevin Kinsella, founding partner of Avalon Ventures, and Tim Wallader, founding partner of BioVest Ventures, and more recently a partner in Sandling Ventures. Together, these gentlemen have been involved with the creation and financing and development of over 150 life science companies in the United States. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask each of them to talk about one of their, one of their uh, favorite companies, that, the, the successful companies. Uh, we, we all know that venture capitalists have unsuccessful companies, but the successful companies. We're going to start with Jim Blair. And I've asked Jim to talk about the creation of Dura, uh, Dura Pharmaceuticals, um, how he did it back then. And the reason I, one of the reasons I asked Jim to, do, to, to talk about Dura, he might have chosen that on his own, I suppose, was first of all, it was very successful. There, the company eventually grew to 1,000 employees and it was sold in 2000 to Elan for over $1.7 billion. But for many years, I've heard people tell me that Dura could not have been successful without without Jim Blair and Jim Blair's contribution. I never understood why. And now, today, I'm hoping that I'm going to find out why. Jim, I want you to talk about your... I have a very good PR agent <laughs> that, uh, that helped us do that. But uh, I, I would correct you at one point as we sold it for $2.9 billion, not one yeah. What's a billion here? 1.7 was your part, right? 1.7 was what you chose. Your part, right? <laughs> 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 Still here, Bill, where I got my name. That's a billion. Basically, uh, uh, the foray into Dura was actually uh, uh, rather circuitous uh, in the sense that uh, uh, I had worked in the high tech sector uh, originally, and then I, uh, I went to work for a venture firm that was affiliated with the Rothschild family. And the chairman of the Rothschild family was a fellow by the name of Victor Rothschild that started a a fund called Biotechnology Investments Limited uh, that uh, started its activity in 1981. And we made some good early investments in that fund. Uh, uh, Amgen, for example, was one of them applied biosystems, and so we got off to kind of a good early start. And, and uh, I was doing tech investing at the same time as I was doing uh, life science investing and decided that uh, this was a pretty exciting area and worthy of some concentration. And so uh, by 1984-85, I decided we were going to spin out and start the firm that I'm uh, founder of, Domain Associates. Uh, and we're going to concentrate uh, uh, our resources uh, within the firm on helping these uh, emerging companies uh, uh, in the biotech sector uh, develop fully. I worked for a great guy at uh, Rothschild by the name of Charlie Lay. And at the time we invested in Amgen, we were highly impressed with George Rathman. Uh, because of his uh, business active, and he was a scientist, but uh, he had run the diagnostics business for Abbott and built it up quite successfully. And so when he came and pitched to us, we thought he was a pretty good guy to entrust uh, uh, our share of $18 million, uh, which was the startup uh, financing amount for the company. And we put the dough in, and we, uh, uh, in the process of doing that, uh, uh, Charlie made the comment that the problem with the biotech industry was there was phenomenal science, but not very good management. And that uh, there was going to be a, uh, a floodgate of people that were learning how to manage these businesses for probably the first uh, five or 10 years. And that time, you would be able to see the businesses that you were working with with some pretty good people. 